This is Midweek Bible Study with Pastor Alan Deuce. Hey Richfield, welcome back to Midweek Bible Study. Jen uh, loves World War One and World War Two history about, and uh, recently we watched a movie about World War One. At the end, it's uh, it's been filled with all kinds of of very real battle scenes with pain and and challenge, and uh, the hero whose name is Captain Black is severely wounded in the uh, final battle, and now we're at the final. Scene scene and he is sitting there and he's dying. But it's interesting because he isn't concerned about himself. He isn't focused. He's dying, but he isn't focused on himself. In the final battle and in this scene where he is dying, Captain Black is focused on two things. He's focused on completing his mission and he's focused on the people who are around him. Last week in, uh, in John chapter 16, <clears throat> Jesus said, everything's going to be okay. Uh, in verse 33 of John chapter 16, Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus said, you will have peace. I recently started listening to a book by a guy who suffers from severe anxiety. Uh, he said in the year 2012, three out of ten Americans were actually suffering from anxiety, which seems like a really high number, but I have a feeling that right now that number is even higher, don't you think? Uh, with the uh, COVID pandemic, we now have the highest unemployment rate since the Great Depression. People are questioning the integrity of our government. We really don't know what is going to happen next. But you know what? We really never have. Um, in the middle of a time of incredible uncertainty, Jesus said, everything's going to be okay. In Him, we can have peace. Jesus, here in John 17, 16 and 17, Jesus was headed to the cross. He was between the upper room and the Garden of Gethsemane. He was facing the most horrible circumstance that we can possibly imagine. It was terrifying. And yet, Jesus wasn't focused on Himself. Jesus was reassuring His disciples that in Him, they could have peace. Real peace. Peace that cuts through anxiety like butter. Peace that allows us to focus on His love and His joy. Now, John doesn't show us, but in the other Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they tell us that Jesus had His moment in the Garden of Gethsemane where He confronted His own anxiety. He sweat great drops of blood. So anxiety, experiencing uncertainty, doesn't make you a bad person. Dealing with anxiety makes you human. Jesus was fully human. But embracing God's peace in the face of uncertainty or suffering or death, that is an incredible gift from Jesus. Jesus looks at every one of us and Jesus says, In me, you can have peace. It's going to be okay. And as soon as Jesus said this, it was the last verse in chapter 16, as soon as He said, You can have peace, in me, he looked toward heaven and he began a conversation with his heavenly Father. Verse 1, after Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and he prayed. Now, the word that is translated in the NIV, uh, which I'm using here, uh, for pray is actually said or spoke. It is not the normal word for pray. Jesus looked to heaven and he spoke to his Father. Uh, of course, Jesus was praying as we think about praying because he was talking to God. But once again, Jesus is, is, is emphasizing the intimacy that he has with his Father. Jesus looked toward heaven. 
Now, what do you do when you pray normally? I mean, we normally, we pray, we bow our heads, we close our eyes. That's, that's what we've been trained to do, right? Well, in the Bible, lifting your eyes toward heaven, sometimes lifting your hands toward heaven was more normal. Psalm 123, 1 is a good example where the psalmist said, I lifted my eyes to you, to you who sits enthroned in the heavens. <clears throat> You know, it's amazing how changing little things can sometimes make a really big difference. Let me encourage you, try looking to heaven while you're praying. I like to sit in the sanctuary and look at the cross, or I like to pray while I'm running, or I like to walk while I'm praying. But whether you kneel or you stand or you lay face down, prostrate before God, closed eyes, open eyes, Every little change can help me focus differently in prayer. Uh, when I was a kid, I remember vividly Wednesday night prayer meeting. We would all gather in the sanctuary and have some songs and testimonies and a short message. And, and we would often gather around the altar for very serious prayer. Uh, I learned a lot about uh, praying at that altar from just watching and listening to the people who were praying. Uh, I can still hear a lot of those voices. I remember one lady, her name was Madge. Uh, she was a retired school teacher. She was a larger than life person. She was a great Christian lady. And I can still hear, hear her very powerful voice raised in prayer. And one phrase that often she would pray and it would stick out for me was because she would say, Oh Lord, teach us to pray. Oh Lord, teach us to pray. And I'm thinking, lady, you have forgotten more about prayer than, than I will ever know. But somehow she felt this intense urgency to pray, Lord, teach us to pray. So, I tried to follow her example. I began to pray that prayer. I still pray that prayer. Oh Lord, teach us to pray. Because I want to learn to pray like Jesus. Jesus is our example in everything. And Jesus is certainly our model in prayer. The disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. John chapter 17 is Jesus' longest recorded prayer in the Bible. It is Jesus praying for us and teaching us to pray. He began this incredible conversation with His Father and He told His disciples, it's going to be okay. And then He began to pray. It's going to be okay. Let's talk to God about it. Of course it's going to be okay. Let's talk to our Heavenly Father about it. So let me encourage you, when life gets difficult, talk to the Father. When you don't understand what's going on, talk to God. John 17 has been called the high priestly prayer of Jesus since about the 16th century. Now, priests had uh, many different roles in the Bible, but there were two really big responsibilities that priests had. The first one was to offer sacrifices, and the second one was to intercede between God and His people. Uh, Jesus is about to go to the cross. So, some people think of this prayer as Jesus in His high priestly role preparing Himself to be sacrificed. But when you look at the content of these prayers here in John 17, Jesus' focus isn't so much on self-sacrifice as it is on intercession. Jesus prays first for Himself and then for His disciples and then for us. Jesus here, right here, right now, is Jesus, our great high priest, interceding for us. It's what He's still doing. In Hebrews chapter 4, it says, Therefore, since we have this great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God. See, right now, the Bible says that Jesus, the Son of God, as high priest, is praying for you. He offered Himself as the sacrifice that never needs to be repeated. And because He is God's Son, and He Himself never sinned, 
His sacrifice is totally enough. No more sacrifices will ever be needed. Revelation pictures Jesus as the Lamb of God whose sacrifice qualifies Him to share the throne with God the Father. He gave Himself for us and He intercedes for us. Remember, in John chapter 16, Jesus said He was making it possible for us to talk directly to God the Father. We can talk to God the Father. We can talk to God the Son. We can talk to God the Holy Spirit. Jesus opened the way for us to follow His example and talk to the Father. So let's learn to pray like Jesus. Jesus also lived to glorify God. Verse 1, the second half, Jesus' prayer, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that your Son may glorify you. <clears throat> Can I ask you, does, uh, does prayer ever feel complicated or confusing or hard? Jesus talked to his Father and his constant focus was for everything that he did and everything that he said to give God glory. Jesus asked God for help. Uh, do you have a problem? When you have a problem, pray like Jesus and ask God for help. Do you have a question? Pray like Jesus and ask God for His help. Ask God for His answers. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus begged God the Father to not make Him go to the cross. But Jesus lived to glorify God. Jesus said, God, I want your will more than I want my will. I don't want to do this. I don't want to experience this. I don't want to go through this. But God, I want what you want. I want to give you glory, bring you glory more than I want what I want. Ask God anything but live to glorify God. Now, sometimes, sometimes it's really difficult for me, especially when life is intense, to sort out my own motives. I'm not always sure even what's driving my own heart, especially when I'm hurting or somebody I care about is hurting. So, Pray like Jesus. God, here is what I really, really want. But I want what you want, God, more than I want what I want. I want everything in my life to glorify you. My devotions right now are in the book of Job. And Job had it really, really rough. Job had a great life to begin with. God was really blessing him. And he had lots of money and lots of possessions. And he had a big family that he adored. And he had all the respect of the community. And, and, and Job loved God. And he lived to glorify God. And then everything Job had was taken away. His kids died tragically, all his stuff was stolen, even his personal health uh, fell apart. Job really struggled. Job was grieving. He says he wished he had never been born. But he said, God, I hate this pain. I don't like it. I don't understand it. But no matter what, let the name of the Lord be praised. Life can be really hard to understand. Life can be really hard to take sometimes. But like Jesus, keep living to glorify God. And we do that like Jesus by focusing on God's mission. Look at verse 2. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now, this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Focus on God's mission. This is what Jesus is saying. Now, if you go back to Daniel's prophecy in chapter 7 of Daniel's prophecy, he says that the Ancient of Days gives authority, glory, and sovereign power to the one like a son of man who is coming. Well, 
that Son of Man is Jesus and the sovereign glory, this sovereign power that God gave to Jesus becomes the basis for the Great Commission that we see in Matthew 28 and elsewhere. See, Jesus is praying for Himself. These first few verses are Jesus praying for Himself. He's talking to God the Father about Himself, but He's not just focused on Himself. He's focused on God's mission. Jesus is part of God's mission. He's the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, but He is focused on the Father's mission. He is part of that mission. See, God's mission is bigger than just me. It's bigger than just mine. It's bigger than our local church. It's bigger than, than it, it, it's for all people everywhere to know and to follow and to love Jesus. And Jesus was totally and completely committed to God's mission. He gave everything to complete God's mission. Jesus lived a sinless life, totally sinless life, focused on God's mission. You want to know how to conquer and overcome sin in your life. Part of it is staying focused on God's mission. Jesus dealt with poverty. He dealt with political persecution. He ultimately dealt with his own death because he stayed focused on God's mission. Every step of his life, Jesus stayed focused on God's mission. How do we deal with the, the challenges that we face in our own lives? Live like Jesus. Stay focused on God's mission. Jesus built everything in His life around His focus on God's mission. Jesus took care of His family. Uh, from the cross, he committed his mother into the care of John. He took care of his family. He took care of his disciples. He, he took care of and he did it all by staying focused on God's mission. Jesus lived within his means so he could focus on God's mission. We could go through every dimension of Jesus' life and we could say Jesus did this and we could point out how he did it by staying focused on God's mission. Jesus invites us to live like him. How do you deal with the different dimensions of your life effectively and and victoriously stay focused on God's mission. Jesus stayed focused and He finished God's work. He stayed on task. Look at verse 4. He's speaking again to God the Father and He says, I've brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. Now, I run a lot, and uh, once you get warmed up and you start running, the first mile usually isn't very bad. But the further you go, the harder it gets. Your muscles start to ache. Your lungs start to burn. Fatigue becomes not only a physical, but a real mental battle. Following Jesus is a marathon, not a sprint. Jesus said He brought glory to the Father by finishing the work that God had given Him to do. His early ministry, wow, Jesus' early ministry, I mean, His first miracle, He turned water into wine, He walked on water, He fed thousands, He did miracle after miracle after miracle, His preaching, His teaching, His, his interactions with people, they were all amazing. Every day of His life and ministry was astonishing, but it wasn't enough. See, we needed Jesus to go all the way to Good Friday and all the way to Easter. Without Easter, all those great things that came before wouldn't have been enough. Without Easter, all those things wouldn't really have mattered. See, following our great high priest means finishing the race. It means staying on task. It means running all the way to the end. You know, we get tired. Our bodies get fatigued. Our minds get fatigued. We may have run for Jesus and run in life for a long time. We may be battling all kinds of circumstances. And surely we think it's good enough. But God says, finish the work. See, bringing glory to God is about finishing the work that is he, he has entrusted to us. And then, when we finish the work, we can look 
to God's promise. Verse 5, look at what Jesus says. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. began. Jesus came from God and Jesus went back to God. Jesus gave glory to God on earth by completing the mission God had given him to do. So Jesus went back to heaven triumphant. We don't earn our place in heaven, but we can only have confidence in God's promise of ongoing eternal life with Him while we continue to live for Jesus. It's living to give God glory. It's focusing on His mission to accomplish His work in the world. We are called to focus on Jesus, to take up our cross and complete the work, the ministry of Jesus here on earth. See, our families need our intercession. The people around us, I would argue, need Jesus more right now than they ever have. Our world is confused and chaotic in these days, and they need Jesus. Jesus sent you and me into 2020 for this moment. While we are dealing with our own lives and our own challenges and all the stuff that makes life so very, very complex and very, very rich, we need to keep our lives focused on God's mission. People need Jesus. Yes, our circumstances get complicated and difficult, but lift up your eyes. Look to God. Jesus said it's going to be okay. If we keep focused on His mission, our lives can glorify God when we push through the pain and keep running for Him. God bless you. Keep looking to Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you that you are our great high priest. Thank you, oh, thank you, Jesus, that you completed your mission and that we can look with faith and hope and trust. We can know that in you, everything's going to be okay. If we just hold on to you, keep following you, keep trusting, keep learning, keep interceding. Bless us together as we seek to follow you. In the powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week.